Right, so um, basically the design of the rear brake caliper on your Triumph Tiger is not the smartest, mainly because it's underneath the actual brake disc, so any and all water, rubbish, crap, salt goes straight into the thing and basically corrodes it. So what's happened to this one is um, the pistons are sticking ever so slightly. There's two pistons, one here, one here. Um, one of them is sticking. I'm not entirely sure which one, but uh, what I'm going to do is go whip the caliper off, get the pads out, find out which one it is, and uh, have a crack at fixing it. So it's not a bad thing to do anyway if you've got one of these bikes is to get all of this stuff off and make sure it's all covered in copper grease and stuff um, generally um, I found that it was an absolute nightmare to take off before because the, um, the bike doesn't have any, any lube on it from the factory and again it just all just seizes up so if you don't want to replace all the pins and all the parts every single time this is probably the way to do it a couple of things you'll need um, decent socket set with a 14 mil um, attachment in there because the two big bolts that you're going to have a go at this one and this one that's the size they are the uh, original toolkit for the bike you don't really need that so much but the allen key that's in there is particularly good for getting the pad pins out it's the right size usually it's not been touched uh, and that means that the the points on it are pretty sharp again something that you're going to want because you don't want to round these off otherwise they're going to get drilled out um, the rest of the kit to be honest is pretty sparse you've got a 10 mil spanner 14 mil spanner and your 27 mil um, one for doing the chain I did the chain yesterday otherwise I would kind of show you and obviously the kind of push lever and, uh, put it together yourself screwdriver um, for the pads Basically, I'm going to use some three in one, and so the traditional get out of jail free WD 40, uh, and I'm just going to push them down with some 1500 grit. Um, lots of stuff, also, good idea to get some something to wipe your hands on, and something to wipe your bike on. Uh, do ignore the message on the front, it's just an old t shirt that I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, but basically, yeah, if you're going to do something like this it's important to make sure you've got all the bits before you start taking it apart otherwise you're just going to start swearing uh, and generally it's a good idea to look after the brakes on your bike because um, you don't want an accident that's your fault to be honest not something that's because Solvo will buy kind of simple bit of maintenance obviously um, accidents happen sometimes karma can be an absolute bitch but <laughs> that's just how it is isn't it um, if you're going to have an accident and you've Come back bite you on the back side, there's not much you can do, but it doesn't have to be all your fault. So, right tight, left loose. There we go. It's going to come straight off, hopefully. Uh, also, a good idea to put cover up any cuts you've got because we are dealing with something that's pretty damn gross in here. A lot of brake dust, a lot of, I see straight away. But you can see that the copper grease that I've pointed before is, is still on there, which is why it's coming out so easily. Uh, as I said, one of these is stuck so that caliper is very tight on the wheel. The brake's basically on, let's just work it off. There we go. Like I can see it's a pretty simple system. Uh, you've got the one back pad and plate, bolt coming through, and there's your two pistons inside. Like I say, one of those is clearly stuck, and then the front pad there. So what we're gonna do is just you're gonna want to get your Allen key, get it in the wee hole there, and there we are. Coming out straight away again, because it's nice and greased up, but as you can see it's sat like a little basically like a little bathtub for any salt and stuff if you're running in the summer you shouldn't really have any problems although I would recommend doing this anyway just as a matter of course go pin straight out um, but in winter 
I would say it's absolutely vital because I, I've had these things stuck before and it's very expensive sending it away trying to get the thing drilled out or at best getting it out without having to redo all the threads in here so it's a little bit of preventive maintenance goes a long way so back pad just lifts straight out so we clip fastens on the bottom the second one is a bit more of a bind because it pushes in fairly firm just take that wee screwdriver that comes with the kit just leave that out of there you can see it just sits in those two it just sits in the arm there that's all so it's a bit tighter and we're out and inside there I hope you can see there's your two pistons that are pushing your brakes now I hope now as it happens both of these are level so that's a plus because it means they're actually working as a partnership even if they're not retracting but I don't know if you can see that at all it's quite gungy in there uh, and a bit of a mess so I think that's probably what the problem is if we just have a go at pushing the pushing the pad down that's the brake and you can see only one of them's moving so what we'll do is I'm going to put a clamp on that push this one out and clean it up and then we'll look at getting it back in again and I'll hopefully show you that one later thanks for watching right so all I've done here is I've just put a 3 inch or 75 mil G clamp across the one that's actually working and all that means is when we pump the piston next time it's going to push out the one that isn't the one that's sticking all the force of the fluid and the braking system um, luckily the tiger comes with braided hoses so it's pretty damn good um, it's going to push out the bottom one that will give us a little bit of a chance to see more of it clean it up oil it and then we'll look to shove it back into place and, and see what happens um, I should have said as well at start ignore all the muck around here I'm going to wash this afterwards but I didn't fancy sitting on a wet bit of floor uh, and also like I say I did the chain yesterday so all this in here is just oil to keep the um, chain bits going no, no faults with the bike at all right so these are our two pistons out um, this one here is the one that's sticking you can see I don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera but there's a bit of white scoring around the side of it I think that's just a little bit of salt corrosion and um, the other one looks fairly clean and is moving pretty freely so our issue is clearly with this bad boy here and um, just pull the retention clip forward so we can see the two but we can see the two pistons there's that scoring on the side all I'm going to do is just going to rub that down now with some uh, some wet and dry very fine stuff just so we don't damage the seal on the other side oil it back up push it in pump it out oil it up push it in pump it out and keep doing it until it's moving freely and then put the whole thing back together again okay right to put the um, pistons back in the first thing you need to do is take the cap off the rear reservoir it just allows some air to come back otherwise you'll be pushing fluid out all over the place again the same allen key from the toolkit will do the job you can keep hold of it I'm trying to do hold the camera at the same time uh, this one as again as per the others i have had out i've copper greased up uh, you can if you want to take this entire side panel off the bike I've removed the seat in this case you can take the whole side panel off but to be honest it's an awful lot of bolts and if you just move this forward a little bit it'll stay in place and you can still unscrew the top and remove the filter and bung without any real issues without actually taking half the bike the bits Right, so I've put the um, brake fluid back, um, redone the cap, etc. Just because it was easier to do it off camera, it's not like I need to show you how to screw the tap on a jar. Um, hopefully, you can see in here that the um, 
pistons have been wound back, it's all been oiled up, uh, I've cleaned them out a little bit, um, they've gone right back into the housing, uh, I've done it about 10 times I think, just to make sure that they're actually moving okay. So hopefully it's time to put the piston, the pads back in. I will start with the front one, um, the, the slightly smaller one, um, just because it's got to fit in that gap. It's also, if you notice, there's a wee little metal spring clip right in the bottom of this, so you, it, it, you have to force it down quite a bit to actually get it into place. Um, what is a useful way of doing it is trying to just match it onto the, onto the pin, so I'm just going to rest it in there. Take the pin, smear it in the copper grease, and just basically just put that back through, back through the hole there, and then you can just watch from the other side and see how much further down you need to push the pad. And bam! That's one of the pins halfway home. Second pin, same thing. Just dunk it in the copper grease. And then through the second hole, watch from the front, make sure you, you're all lined up. You could hear the pad click home, which is great news. Um, just wipe my fingers because I'm going to just touch the pad a little bit and push it back. Let's make sure it's in straight. There we are. Um, I've not pushed the, pa the pads, the pins all the way home, sorry, because obviously I need to put the second one in. So highlight about how bad the weather is here sometimes with the and I the fact that I ride all year um, unlike some people who just put them in the garage for you know nine months of the year um, these were brand new uh, two weeks ago and they used to have a nice gold color <laughs> on them and the salt's just eating them alive so there's no real surprise that the rest of the bike is struggling in the same way so that's that pad in Right, so just going to push the push the pins home, put the pad in, and it's just a case of tightening up the bolts again now. And as you can see, nice bit of copper grease on the end, going back very easy, and it's a simple bit of maintenance. I mean, you, you saw at the start, it took me, and that's with a bit of quid, obviously with a fair bit of chat, I'm doing it fairly slow, um, just to show you guys what we're doing, just make sure it's tight by using the long end as well. Um, it took me all the five minutes to do that. As I say, it's kind of better to be better to be safe than sorry. And if you were to send this to a garage, the pads cost um, 15 quid in the UK, so $25, something like that. Um, if you're Australian, maybe a, bit, a little bit less. Um, and yeah. It's you know what I mean. You would have charged. You would have paid three times that if you got paid someone to do it. And it's so. Let's see if it's actually working. 